Hello everyone, Captain Horn here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. I hope you enjoy watching and maybe even learn a thing or two from this video. Before we begin, if you would like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It takes less than 5 seconds and it would greatly help my channel out. If you are interested in supporting myself and my channel, be sure to check out the different tiers in my Patreon for different rewards. If you are interested in becoming an active member in my community, or would like to find others to fly with in Microsoft Flight Simulator, feel free to join my Discord server. The link to both my Patreon and Discord is in the description. Let's get right into this video. Today we will be looking at the FMS and MCDU of the Airbus A320neo in the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. But first, what is an FMS and MCDU? First of all, these are two different things on the aircraft that work in conjunction with each other. The FMS part stands for Flight Management System, and the MCDU part is an acronym that stands for Multifunction Control and Display Unit. What are these systems, you ask? Well, the MCDU can be seen from the captain's seat and co-pilot seat. There are two of these units on this aircraft. The MCDU allows the pilot or co-pilot to manipulate different keys on the unit in order to adjust a flight plan, set up takeoff configurations, set up approach configurations, and many other things. The other part, the FMS, is not seen by anyone on the aircraft, and is actually hidden away on the interior of the aircraft. The FMS is what performs all these functions that are input on the MCDU. Think of it like a computer keyboard. When you press a certain combination of keys, the keyboard outputs this information to the computer and as a result, words appear on the screen. When you first look at this computer, you might think it looks complicated, but it really is not. It is a simple computer system that greatly helps pilots with flight plans and controlling the aircraft to get it from point A to point B. Now that we know what each system does, let's get into how to program the MCDU and talk about the different buttons on the MCDU. This is the first thing that you will see on the MCDU when powering up the aircraft. It is simply a page that shows some different information about the aircraft. This shows the aircraft type. Obviously we are in an Airbus A320. This is showing what engines are installed on this aircraft. Since we are in the NEO, which stands for New Engine Option, we have CFM Leap A1 engines. This section is showing the main navigation database and secondary navigation database that is currently installed on the FMS. We see that my current active database is from the 4th of May to the 4th of July, which actually means my navigation data is currently out of date. In the real world, there have been delays in flights because an engineer has to come and update the navigational data on an aircraft. This is the change code of the aircraft. The change code must be entered to change the performance factor. This is something we do not need to worry about in the simulator. The idle perf is used to correct the performance computation to the historical performance of the aircraft. Again, this is something we do not need to worry about. The software status page allows pilots to view the current database installed on the aircraft, something we do not need to worry about in the simulator. Starting left to right, the first button we come across is the DIR button. If we click this, it brings us to this page. In this page, you are able to select a given waypoint to go directly to. This way, pilots can skip other waypoints and instead go direct to a waypoint or even an airport that is ahead in the flight plan. For example, if we take this flight route, and instead of following Duge, getting on the Q83 airway to the Heaven waypoint, we could enter the next waypoint, which is MZZ, to skip everything before it. After we enter the MZZ into the waypoint option, we may sometimes see this. This could mean that there are two different waypoints with the name MZZ. In this case, they are both the same, so I would just pick the top option. After I select the top option, it gets input into the waypoint section. Then we see two orange options at the bottom. The one on the left simply undoes what we put in in case we made a mistake. The one on the right inserts it and guides the aircraft to that next waypoint. The next button is PROG. This is the progress page and it displays flight data for the current phase of flight. This page will update as the aircraft flies to its destination. It will list cruise altitude, optimal altitude, and recommended max altitude. It also lists the bearing and distance to the next waypoint. The next button is the PERF page. Here you can set up the takeoff performance of the aircraft including the different V speeds and flaps. This page will change depending on which stage of flight the aircraft is currently in. The phases include takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, approach, and go around. For our sake, 
The only phases that we should worry about are the takeoff phase in which you set the flaps and the approach phase where you can set the expected winds, altimeter, transition, and decision height. The next button is the init page. This is the initialization page. Here you can set your departure and arrival airport, cruise altitude, flight number, and cost index. Next we have the data page. Here you can monitor the IRS and GPS positions and view the aircraft status, which is the page the MCDU defaults to when you first get in the aircraft. Next we have the flight plan page. This page is probably the most important page. In here, it shows you the different legs of the flight, including different waypoints and the departure and arrival airports. In this page, we can set up different departures and approaches using SIDS and STARS. The next button is the RAD NAV page, which is the radio navigation page. In here, you can input different frequencies of VORs and ILSs. This page is very useful for viewing the ILS frequency and course and making sure it is correct. The next few buttons are currently inactive in the simulator, therefore we will not take a look at them. Now let's get a flight plan and put some variables into the MCDU. Now that we know everything about the MCDU and FMS and we know what each of the buttons do, we're actually going to go on a full flight from Charlotte to Atlanta. It's a very short flight and it'll give you a good idea of how to use this FMC or MCDU, whichever one you would like to call it. Now the first thing we're going to do is head down here and we need to set up our init page because this is the page remember where you set up your departure and arrival airport and um, before we do that we actually need to grab a flight plan and for that we're going to use Simbrief which is a totally free website for simulation flight planning. In Simbrief you need to create an account and um, after that you can set up a new flight and there's plenty of tutorials out there I might do one myself but all we really need is our departure and arrival which I'm going to fill in right here and it is the ICAO code so I'm going to type KCLT for Charlotte and we are going to arrive at KATL for Atlanta and it's going to load here and feel free to pick your airframe since we are in the A320 I will now if we scroll down we got our route right here and this is the SID of the route the standard instrument departure this is the transition and then this is the transition into the arrival for the Aussie One Star. All right. After we have that, we can hit Generate OFP right here, and allow it to load. And after it loads, we can scroll down and we get our cruising altitude right here. If we scroll down further, we got some paperwork right here, and the only thing we really want to pay attention to is this right here, the CI12. That is your cost index, which is something that was also mentioned. And if we scroll down further we can get our route and it even tells us the expected departure runway and the expected arrival runway now for this sake we are going to be taken off from runway 18 center which is the opposite but they still use the Bob Z4 departure so we're going to use that so all we need to remember is this cost index and our cruise altitude all right, now that we know our cost index and cruise altitude, we can start filling in this init page. So first we have the from to, and that's pretty simple. I'm just gonna put KCLT, and then I'm gonna put the slash and KATL, just like that, and enter it right up here. And it's gonna bring us to this page here. All you have to do is hit return. After that, we it automatically fills in our cruise level which actually happens to be correct now if this was different say we needed flight level 340 then we could fill that in as well by just typing FL340 and filling it in just like that and it automatically sets the temperature and our cost index was 12 so we just enter 12 and enter into the cost index the next thing we want to do is head back into Simbrief and check a look at our route. So from KCLT, we're going to be departing out of 18 center. Now it's not going to matter. We're still going to be able to use the Bob Z4 departure. And um, we'll need the Tinsley transition. So let's go back into the game and hit this flight plan button down here. And we have some things filled in here. We have KCLT, Decelerate, and Atlanta. And we need to fill in everything in between. So we're going to click on KCLT, and this is going to allow us to set our departure by clicking the same button again for departure. All right. Next, we want to select the runway that I am on. Now, even though Simbrief says 36 center, again, I am going to be taken off from 18 center. So I'm going to click 18 center, 
And then we're going to get that Bob Z4 departure. This is all your SIDs right here. And then we have the Tinsley transition. And after that, we're going to click this insert button right there. And now some more things are going to populate. The next thing we have is a direct, that's what this DCT is, and it says we are going direct to Levi and the Aussie 1 arrival into Atlanta with 09 left runway. So let's go back into the simulator and do the exact same thing, except this time for the destination, KATL. Click it, and we have arrival instead of departure. Let's click arrival. And we are going into ILS 09 left, and the star was the Aussie 1, so we're just going to use this arrow right here to scroll until we find it. Right there it is. And we are not going to use any vias. And our transitions will now come up. And remember, we want the Levi transition. Just like that. And then we hit temporary insert. Just like that. And after that, we should have a direct to the transition, which is the Levi. All right, another thing, after you enter your flight plan just like that, if you want to come back up here, you can actually check and get a visualization on how your route's going to work. All you want to do is twist this knob right here to plan, right there. And then you want to use the up arrow and scroll up and down, and you notice it changes on our ND right there. So what we can do is actually scroll all the way back to CLT, and here we are. So right out of the gate, after we get off the ground, we want to make an immediate right turn to start heading towards this Lachin waypoint. And then you can also set the distance, the range of it. I usually set it to 40. All right, and then we can keep scrolling. And there's our Tinsley transition. And from there, we are at our in route stage of the flight. And it brings us directly to our star, just like that. And if I zoom in, we see that we come around just like that and intercept the localizer right around here and fly straight into the runway. Next, what we need to do is set up our perf page. And we, when we click on this button, it's going to bring us to this page right here. Now, we notice that we already have V1 speed, VR speed, and V2 speed, but we do not have our flaps or flex to temp. Now, we're going to need to use a different website in order to get these variables. The link will be in the description. It is simply an Airbus performance calculator, a takeoff performance calculator, and it's really simple to use. All we have to do is select our aircraft, so A320, of course. Our engine is CFM because we are in the NEO. Our units, this depends on where you live. If you are outside of the United States, obviously you want to use metric, but I am inside the United States, so I will use Imperial. Origin, ICAO, for me, is going to be KCLT, but enter whatever your airport you are at. Click on METAR to autofill in these down here. Next, what we need is flaps, and you generally always want one plus F unless it's a rainy day or you're at altitude or maybe you're on a short runway. But generally, if you're at a major airport, you always want one plus F. Packs, this is your air condition, they will be on. Anti-ice will be off unless you're in Alaska or somewhere cold. Runway, right now at Charlotte, it is dry. All right, next what we have to do is come over here to this runway right here. Now notice there is two, but you want this top one right here, the runway, and we're going to select 18 center because that is the runway I'm taking off from. After that, we need to get our pounds right here, or our toe pounds, or kilograms. Now, for this, we need to go back into the simulator, come down here to the drop menu, and click this little bell-looking thing, or this weight, and it says fuel. And when you click this, what you want to know is this bottom number, the very bottom one. It's total and max takeoff weight. For me, it is 133,821 pounds. Now, again, this is if you are inside the United States. Obviously, if you are outside, this is going to be kilograms. But for me, it is pounds. So 133,819. I'm going to enter that right here. 133,819, just like that. After you enter this variable right here, we're going to click this Calculate. And after that, we are now finished, and we can input these into our perf page. Now, this is our flex. Our flex temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. So we're going to go into here and then just simply enter 60 and put it in our flex, just like that. Next, we have our flaps, which are set to 1 plus F, but you just want to enter 1. So if we go back into the simulator and enter a 1 and put it in this clean flap slash THS, and it goes in just like that. Next, what we have to do is verify our takeoff speeds. And according to this calculation, all three of them are 144. 
So let's go back into our aircraft and notice these are wrong. It wants all of these to be 144. Now even though it said our V speeds were 144, it appears the simulator automatically sets these and does not allow you to change them. If I put 144 and enter it there, nothing changes. So that will maybe get fixed. I don't know why it's doing that, but don't worry about it for now. The last thing we have to check in this perf page is our transition altitude. It's currently set to 10,000 feet, but if you are in the United States, it is 18,000 feet. And if you're in Europe, it might, I think it's like 6,000 feet, something like that. You'll just have to look it up. But I do know that in the United States, it is 18,000 feet. So we need to change this number to 18000 and then click there. And there we go. At this point, we can navigate back to our flight plan and take off. Now, what's going to happen is the autopilot, or rather the FMS, is actually going to follow this flight plan and it'll follow this green line all the way to our destination. So let's go ahead and take off. Now, one thing that you do want to do is set up your altitude on your autopilot panel to your cruise. And for us, it is going to be 34,000 feet, just like that. And make sure your speed and heading are three dashes and a dot because this is managed speed and heading mode. Now you can enter selected speed mode and adjust it, but if you want the MCDU to manage your speed, then you will need it to have it on three dashes and one dot. All right, with that being said, make sure your flaps are down and everything's ready to go, and we can go ahead and take off. Now with the Airbus, what you want to do is actually just go up to this flex, which is the second click. In other words, you do not want full throttle. Full throttle is TOGA, which is takeoff go around thrust, and you only use that when necessary. For instance, a short runway or a heavy aircraft. This is purely to save on fuel and engine efficiency. All right, we are now at V1. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate. And get it off the ground, just like that. With a positive rate, we can go gear up and we are actually going to lower the throttles down to this CL right there which is climb and now the FMC is automatically managing our speed and we do not have to touch the throttle at all alright after that we can go ahead and engage the autopilot and I'm going to turn my flight directors on just like that and the aircraft is now banking because it is doing like I said it's trying to follow this green line right here and we'll notice that we have throttle climb and climb on and it says nav this navigation means that it is following the flight plan and it will follow this green line all the way to Atlanta Georgia now the reason it says nav is because it is trying to follow this flight plan but if we wanted to automatically guide the aircraft ourselves, we could click downward on this heading knob and it switches to heading and it will follow whichever heading we input here if we click up on the knob then it enters managed heading hold and navigation and will automatically follow this green line now with the autopilot managing our throttle for us if I raise the flaps We'll notice that this just jumped to 250 knots. Now this is because we are still below um, 10,000 feet. And when aircrafts are below 10,000 feet anywhere in the world, they must stay under 250 knots. It's a speed limit. But once we cross over 10,000 feet, we will be able to go faster than 250 knots. We have just crossed 10,000 feet and we'll notice that it is changed to 320 knots because we are now above 10,000 feet and you might be asking why is the autopilot not ascending rapidly up to 34,000 feet it's because the FMS is trying to manage the altitude restrictions that we have at these different waypoints so now it is starting to ascend again because we are nearing the Lachin waypoint we also notice on our MCDU, if we click on the perf page, that this has changed over from takeoff to climb. That's because we are currently in a climb up to 34,000 feet. And we also notice that it says managed mode here. That is because the FMC or the FMS is managing 
our climb for us. The next phase will be cruise and it is also managed and we can set our descent of a cabin rate right here. And then we have descent phase which is also managed and approach phase and we need to fill in some things here once we get to that phase. We are now about to cross the Tinsley which is our transition into our in route phase of the flight. After this waypoint or the transition rather we will be in the cruise stage and once we reach 34,000 feet we will be cruising all the way until we need to descend. Another thing that is important is this little tiny blue arrow right there that you can kind of see. That signifies our top of climb. This is whenever we are going to reach 34,000 feet. And another important thing is this little white arrow. I zoomed out a little bit. This is our top of descent. When our aircraft crosses right here where this arrow is, that is signifying we should start descending in order to make our approach. We've now reached our blue arrow and this has changed over to Mach and Altitude which means it is just going to hold our speed right here at what looks like 285 knots or Mach set 0.7 and it's going to hold our altitude right here at 34,000 feet. From this point we can disengage the seatbelt signs which they are already off but if they are not off go ahead and do that and you have now reached the cruise stage and if we go back to our perf page it is automatically switched over to cruise which is again managed. Now we need to keep a lookout for this white arrow right here and when our aircraft gets there we need to lower our altitude and enter descent mode. But for now just enjoy the cruise at 34,000 feet. We are now nearing this little white arrow which signifies we need to start descending. Now the aircraft is not automatically going to do this. What we need to do is come over here to our altitude and knock this down to about 5,000 feet or 8,000 either or. It doesn't matter just make sure it is under 10,000 feet I like to stick with 5,000. Alright and when we cross this white arrow we are going to want to hit the up arrow on this engage manage altitude mode and this is going to start our descent. So we are now crossing this white arrow so I'm going to hit the up arrow on it and we'll notice this has changed from alt to descent and the throttle is idle because the throttle is going to get idle in order to maintain this speed right here and we are now going to start descending and this is all going to be managed by the MCDU and if we go to our flight plan page we'll notice that we have some numbers beside here like Ryan right here which is our next waypoint and this is our altitude we should be at 7,000 feet before this waypoint and then the next one we have 6,000 the next one 5,000 now the FMC is going to manage all this for you you don't have to touch it as long as you have your altitude low enough it will automatically manage the altitude and descend for you depending on the altitude restrictions of these different waypoints all right, we are now under 10,000 feet, which means I can get my landing lights on, and we actually need to set up the approach phase. So if we go into our FMC and hit this perf page, it's still going to say cruise, but what you want to do is hit activate approach phase, and then confirm, just like that. And we need to set up some things in here. We need the QNH, we can get the temperature and winds, and our decision height. Now, I'm going to get these from that same website that I showed you, the uh, performance calculator, and I just entered KATL and got the METAR. Now, we can see the QNH right here, which is 3009, and we can enter that into here. Now, every time I've tried this, it just goes to, okay, I guess it's going to work. Don't put a decimal. I've put a decimal before, and it has kind of messed up. Temperature, this is Celsius, and that's shown right here, 26, so we can input that just like that and our winds are also shown our direction is 080 at 8 knots and we can put that in just like that 080 slash I believe we need 08 okay it automatically corrected it so it's 80 degrees at 8 knots and decision height I always put 200 um, because that is th pretty much the standard all that means is if you can't see the runway by 200 feet that is your decision whether you need to go around or land. At 200 feet, you have to make the decision whether you want to land or go around. So I just set it as 200. It's not really going to matter considering it is clear as crap outside right now. 
Another thing we can check on the FMC before we do come in for a landing is if you want to perform an ILS approach. Now, if you go to this RAD nav page right beside the flight plan, then we can check the ILS and the frequency. So this is correct. We are landing at ILS 09 left, and that is the correct frequency, 110.5, and the course. Now, you don't have to perform an ILS landing. You can always do a visual approach, especially on a day as clear as it is right now but I will be doing an ILS landing. Since our FMC right down here and the approach chart both say that we need to be at 7,000 feet when we cross Ryan, and Ryan is in 1.7 nautical miles once we complete this turn, I am going to lower my altitude down to 7,000 feet and click up on the knob to descend down to 7,000 feet. Now originally I did have it set to 5,000 feet, but decided that was a little too low, so I bumped it right back up to 8,000 feet before we get to Ryan. Since we are at 7,000 feet and we're about to cross Ryan, the Airbus is actually supposed to automatically manage your descent for you if you are in the managed mode, but I do not believe it does this because if we look down here at our MCDU, at AAK we should be at 6,000 feet, but we are still holding at 7,000 feet. So if that is the case, then what you want to do is do exactly what we did before and just lower your altitude by 1,000 feet down to 6,000 just like that and then you can engage the descent mode again and it will descend also since we are pretty much in line with the runway at this point we can engage our LS button just like that and it gives us the ILS right up here runway 9 left and it turns on our localizer and glide slope and we can engage the LOC mode right here which is going to align us with the runway At this point, we also have our glide slope, but it is not currently being followed, which means we need to engage our APPR mode, and it will now take over the altitude and switch to G slash S, which is glide slope, and we are on the localizer, which means we are perfect exactly where we need to be for an ILS approach. At this point, we can also take over our speed by selecting down on the knob, and this is our selected airspeed, and we can adjust this as we wish. I usually adjust it down to about 180 knots and this is the point where we can start lowering our flaps and drop our gear. As you get closer to the runway you want to gradually lower your speed all the way down to 140 knots is about the speed that I like. If you go any lower then the autopilot can flail out and we all know that the autopilot is not stable at all yet in the simulator but it's doable we can also lower our flaps full at this point you can go ahead and disengage the autopilot when you are at your decision height which is actually coming up our AGL altitude is right here 250 and once we are pretty close to the runway like we are now, we can go ahead and disengage the autopilot just like that and land the aircraft. And touchdown. And after you land, you can raise your flaps and taxi off the runway. Alright guys, so that is how you fly with the MCDU and FMC. I hope you learned some valuable things from this video. Um, be sure to like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them into the in the comments and I will answer them when I am free. I usually answer pretty quickly and try to respond to everybody. 
Don't forget that I do have a Discord and a Patreon. The links to both are in the description. Keep a lookout for more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 tutorials and videos and even live streams. The next one might be a Thursday or Friday this week, and then we have a special one on Sunday. But for now, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night, depending on when you're watching this, and I will see you guys in the next video.